Hey everyone, my name's Ben, and today we are working on this Maytag dryer here, trying to make sure that we can get it to heat. I want to show you everything there is about this machine to get it to heat. All we need to do to get into the machine is use a screwdriver, and then to test a lot of different things to make sure we find out if it works or not, we're going to use a multimeter. I'm going to show you how to change and test all the things so we can get down to the nitty gritty. A lot of people assume that it's just the heating element, you know, replace that. But there are about eight or nine different things you want to check on this kind of machine. And again, it's a Maytag, but the key here is that there is this lint filter right at the front of it. If your Maytag does not have this lint filter, it's going to be a different model. Let's go ahead and start testing this, and we're going to go to the back of the dryer and take the back off, show you the main components, and then get to some of the finer points as well. Since we are working with electricity, the first thing that you want to do is make sure that the dryer is unplugged. We will then, though, at the end of the video, plug it back in for one final test, though. Next, you want to take out your quarter-inch hex head screwdriver and remove all the screws that are holding the rear casing on. Depending on the model, there are between 9 and 11 screws typically on this type of dryer. And in the case of this dryer, though, someone forgot to put a few back on properly, so I have less than 9. Once you have all the screws removed, gently remove the back casing off the dryer and then away from the dryer, saving it plus all the screws for later. When you remove the back plate of this style dryer, there's essentially two main groups of components. On the right side, you're going to have the heating system with the high limit thermal fuse or thermal cutoff depending on how you say it. Then near the bottom, you're going to have the thermostat and heating element itself. The thermostat may have a few different configurations on how it attaches, unlike the one in this video, but they're all the, essentially the same operationally. On the left side, you have the blower housing that cycles air, the thermal fuse, and then the cycling or operational thermostat that handles heat as well. To test the heating element and thermostat, you'll want to remove one spade connector to the heating element to prevent it from giving errant or bad results. You can use pliers to take the spade off, if you find it too difficult to remove with your hand. For testing, you can use the multimeter in either continuity or ohms resistance. You're going to put one lead on one side of the element connectors, then the other lead on the other connector. Or you can also use the leads on the top of the thermostat, and then the other spade connector on the element, and it'll test both at the same time. You should get between 9 and 10 ohms of resistance on the element if it's good. If it's wildly higher, or you don't get any reading at all, chances are it's bad. One other test you can do with the element itself is to put the meter in continuity and then put the lead on one spade connector, then tap the other lead on the element casing itself. If it beeps or gives you a measurement, then the heater is grounded to the cabinet, which is very dangerous. It can give you some heat while the system itself is essentially burning itself up, which could damage your dryer and cause a lot of major awful issues. When inspecting every wire connector, make sure to look for burnt damage or markings on the connections. If they look burnt, it's very likely that this could be the culprit of your dryer not heating, both the connector and the wire. To repair the connection, you'll need to cut away any blackened or damaged part of the wire and use a heavy gauge splicing connector with wire nut to repair the connection. Next, going up to the thermal cutoff or high temp thermostat, you want to remove one of the wires going to the cutoff to test with a multimeter. You're then going to use the continuity or ohms setting and listen either for a beep if it's continuity or on ohms showing 0.0, .0 resistance or something close to that showing that you're getting electricity going through the sensor. If electric can't flow through this sensor, it's going to kill the ability for the dryer to heat at all because electric has to flow through this sensor down to the thermostat then to the element. This sensor I have found personally goes bad rather often, almost as often as the element. But if this sensor goes bad, it's typically indicative that you have another issue with the dryer, such as having too much lint in it, the vent being restricted, not allowing air to vent outside your residence. Make sure to watch the video that I have associated with this to show you where and when to clean the dryer out to get more help on that. Also, if this fuse goes bad, make sure to replace it with the matching thermostat and I'll tell you why in just a few minutes. One of the final pieces of the heating puzzle on this type of dryer is the cycling or operating thermostat. To test it, you need to take one of the red wires off the thermostat. When you have it off, use your multimeter to test the exposed spade and the other spade of the matching red wire to see if you get continuity or ohms resistance close to near zero. Remember if you get on your multimeter like this, 
zero L, that means the sensor has shut off, indicating an open line. On testing the smaller prongs, the purple wires you need to take one off again, set your multimeter to ohms, and test the leads. You should get somewhere between 5,000 and 10,000 ohms, or 5K and 10K ohms of resistance, indicating the small prongs operate properly on the low heat setting. If it's vastly out of spec, you're going to have issues with the low heater setting, and just to be safe, I'm going to replace the operating thermostat on this dryer. On the cycling thermostat, one trick here is that if you keep getting blown thermal cutoffs on your dryer, it's possible that this piece could be bad, even though it technically tests good. Here's why. It's designed to stop operating or shutting off at 155 degrees Fahrenheit to prevent the unit from overheating. It's rare, but it could fail upwards by continuing to feed the dryer heat even past that temperature. This would result in killing all the other fuses, which fail by shutting heat or electricity to the unit. In the case of the white thermal fuse, it would shut the dryer off entirely and stop operating. If you want to test this, you need a multimeter, a heat source, and the cycling thermostat. You would set your multimeter to ohms or continuity, and you should get some resistance naturally from it working. As you heat the thermostat up like I am here with a hot air gun, it should cut off at 155 degrees, causing the multimeter to show up with OL or open line. That would mean that it's good. If you keep feeding it heat way beyond 155 degrees and it keeps working properly, quote unquote, then this thermostat is bad and could be the culprit of multiple types of failures. This is the same way the thermostat near the heater operates, and a component like that one could go bad, which is also what happened on this dryer, and that's why you want to replace the thermal cutoff and the thermostat at the same time, just in case to be safe, they're both rather affordable. With all the sensor tests done, let's go to the console for the last major culprit of heat issues you could typically find on this dryer. Now this is probably the most difficult test in my opinion. Use your quarter inch screwdriver to remove all the screws that hold the metal console backing on the dryer. This is going to expose all the switches and most importantly the dryer timer system. Next, use a putty knife to press in between the console and the dryer top, which will depress a hidden spring, allowing you to pivot the console up and then out to access the dryer timer system. From here, make sure to remove the wire harness on the timer for testing. Once you get this done though, it gives you a very easy way to access the next set of tests. Once the two harnesses at the bottom are off, you want to locate the set of four connectors, typically on the left side. They will be labeled A, B, C, and H. Letter A, B, and C are the ones that we want to test with the multimeter as these handle heat on the timer. Using the dryer's primary knob to adjust modes, you want to cycle through to high heat between 30 and 70 minutes, or whatever ensures that it's not in a cool down mode. Once you have it set to this, you want to use your multimeter to test between the A and B contacts, then the A to C contacts, to see if you get continuity or any sort of electricity between these connectors. When using your multimeter, if you don't get continuity or any sort of resistance, then your timer is bad and it needs replaced. Always make sure to turn the dial clockwise due to how the gearing is built, as going counterclockwise on a timer like this could cause you issues that jam the gears and or the contacts. But you can go through this system testing all the various modes for heat, but almost exclusively, it's the A, B, and C contacts that handle heat and all your problems. Once you have this all done, go ahead and reconnect all the wires to the timer. Each set of wire harnesses only go into one set of connectors, so it should be pretty easy to not get this part wrong. To get the console back into place, you're going to insert the hooks near the rear of the console into place, then rock the console down to press the metal clips into order. The spring clips will snap back into place when the dryer console's locked down. Now one final test here. If you've done everything possible with this Maytag dryer, but you still can't find out why it's not operating that right, you want to check the voltage. At the back of the dryer, behind the panel is the electrical terminal block. First, let's inspect the terminal block that your power cord goes into. Visually, can you see any damage to the cord or the block? If so, it's very, very likely this is the actual cause of your dryer not heating. Either the block or cord need replaced immediately. If you have a multimeter, set it to AC voltage and use the leads on the meter to test the middle and left terminals. Then test the middle and right terminals. Both should register about 120 volts on each side. 
Then you want to test the left and right terminals together. You should get a total between 208 volts and 240 volts depending on your electricity. If you get an odd number below 208, it's likely that your breaker, power cord, or outlet are having a problem and you need to diagnose and fix that. Always remember also to try cycling the breakers at the box by turning the switch all the way off then all the way on if the voltage number is weird. These are all the ways that you can test your Maytag dryer in case it's not heating and I hope that you get your dryer back up and running.